And we'll get to all those stories in a moment. But first tonight, I want to talk about the big battle that is unfolding over this Supreme Court vacancy. Since the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, we've seen all of this back and forth over who should pick the next justice and who that justice should be. A woman with roots here in Indiana is among the front runners tonight. In fact, the Associated Press says Amy Coney Barrett met with the president at the White House today. Now, if you've not heard her name before, don't worry. In tonight's big story, we're digging into her history, not only as a Hoosier, but as a federal judge. We'll look at her major rulings and share the stories of people who've worked and learned by her side. Federal Appellate Court Judge Amy Coney Barrett. Administration officials say the front runner is Judge Amy Coney Barrett. And at the top of the list, we're told, is Judge Amy Coney Barrett. By now, you've heard her name and seen her picture. But who exactly is Judge Amy Coney Barrett? I've known Amy ever since she was a student. Paolo Carazzo is a law professor at Notre Dame. She's kind, uh, unfailingly so, um, listens carefully to people, takes everything seriously, thinks hard. From a former student. Um, there were um, students that you know, had very different points of view when it came to constitutional law, and she went out of her way to be accommodating of them and to um, facilitate open conversation. In 2018, Judge Barrett was honored as a distinguished teacher of the year. She spoke to graduates about the power of their words. What you say reflects who you are and what you believe. And not everyone will love who you are or what you believe, but have the courage of your convictions. Republicans have praised her as an ideological heir to the late Justice Scalia. Liberals have argued her legal views are too influenced by her Catholic beliefs. How do you respond to that claim? I think it's uh, completely unfounded to say that her religious beliefs would shape her decisions in any way that's inappropriate. Friends say even though she's now a federal court judge in Chicago, she commutes from South Bend, the place she, her husband, and their seven children call home. So I think that tells a lot about what she is, too. She's, she's not a person who is driven by uh, ambitions to do, do whatever it takes to sacrifice whatever it takes of her family and her life in order to achieve things. Um, she lives a, a balanced life that is full of human relationships and, uh, and not just work. And here's some more background on Amy Coney Barrett's career. She grew up in New Orleans, graduated from Rhodes College with a degree in English literature. She earned her law degree from Notre Dame and clerked for U.S. Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia. She also worked at a law firm in D.C. before becoming a federal appellate judge. Her expertise is in the federal courts and constitutional law. Abortion rights groups worry that Barrett would help overturn Roe v. Wade. That's the case that legalized abortion nationwide. Barrett has never ruled on abortion itself, but she has cast votes opposing rulings that struck down abortion-related restrictions. For example, back in 2016, our state passed a law requiring burial or cremation for fetal remains after an abortion. The law was ruled unconstitutional, but Barrett voted in favor of rehearing the case. Ultimately, she was outnumbered, but the Supreme Court later reinstated the law. Now, the president says he'll announce his nominee Friday or Saturday. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is already promising a vote by the end of the year. Now, there's a lot of debate about this issue. Some people say whoever wins the November election should be the one to pick the nominee, which was Justice Ginsburg's dying wish. Others are upset tonight that Senate Republicans are now pushing to confirm a new justice during an election year. You know, back in 2016, they blocked President Obama's nominee for the same reason. Both of Indiana's current senators, Mike Braun and Todd Young, were not in the Senate when that happened. Now, we've reached out to both senators to see where they stand on this issue tonight. Braun told us he supports a vote. Young has not answered our question. Have four Republican senators already said they won't vote for a Supreme Court nominee until after the election? That's a viral claim that you asked us to look into. So let's verify tonight. Here's our Jason Puckett. The viral claim looks like this. Quote, four Republican senators now on board, no vote until January on Supreme Court. It then lists Republican Senators Murkowski, Romney, Collins, and Grassley. Right now, the Senate has 53 Republicans and 45 Democrats. It would take at least four Republican senators voting against their party to stop a nominee from being confirmed. 
This claim makes it seem like a done deal, but it's not quite that simple. Let's start with Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski. She put out this statement saying she does not support taking up a potential Supreme Court vacancy this close to the election, adding that she had the same stance when it came to filling Justice Antonin Scalia's seat in 2016 and that, quote, the same standard must apply. So she's against having a vote, but hasn't said what she'd do if one happens anyway. Next, Utah Senator Mitt Romney. He released a statement of condolences after Ginsburg's death, but that's it. A Utah politician claimed Romney will not confirm a nominee until the inauguration, but Romney's communications director said this claim was false. He hasn't said what he will do at this point. Next, Maine Senator Susan Collins. She put out this statement saying she does not believe the Senate should vote on the nominee prior to the election and that the nominee should be picked, quote, by the president who was elected on November 3rd. Like Murkowski, she's against having the vote right now, but hasn't said what she'll do if one is still held. And finally, Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley. He shared condolences after Ginsburg's death and later released a statement affirming he believes the Republican Party and President Trump are within their constitutional rights to fill the seat. While some of these senators are against holding a vote, none of them have said what they will do if a vote is held before the election or inauguration. So right now, this claim is false. If you're seeing other claims or rumors like these, send us an email. We'll check them out. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. As this debate plays out over this vacancy, memorial services are now in the works for Justice Ginsburg. Public viewings begin on Wednesday with her burial set for next week. We're going to be streaming any public services that we can as they happen on our WTHR app later this week. There you can also find updates in the fight over Ginsburg's spot on the bench. And that's tonight's big story.